It's been 43 years in the making and it's been a couple of decades at the very top. It ended with grade one glory twice at Aintree after a dramatic season. This has been the career of Davy Russell. There's a great confident ride by Davy Russell on presenting Percy. He produced it round the home turn and he's got on to him by five or six lengths in good style. What an extraordinary roller coaster it's been for the last couple of weeks, couple of months, David Russell. How are you feeling this morning? Oh, great. Um, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I kind of, when I retired, I was actually happy to retire. And then when I came back, I was happy just to enjoy it. And, and you know, I'm not sad. I'm not, I'm, I, I will miss riding. I love, absolutely love, um, I loved being a jockey. It's everything I ever dreamed about being was just to be able to wear a set of silks and and perform on the race course. And it's, it's when I was always happiest. And I guess because you'd already called it a day once, there wasn't that sensation, was there, no. last night of, oh, my God, what do I do now? No, no. You've done that already? Yeah, I have it done. And, and it was just a matter of whether I said it yesterday at the race and actually finally confirmed because... It was in my head I was going to do it. I wasn't going to ride after entry once I had a, a nice ending. Mm. And um, um, but just a matter, I, I, I didn't want to take. Obviously, I was very conscious that JP had won the quite well won the, the stairs hurdle, and I didn't want to move in on his moment. But I suppose it was the time that Gordon trained it, and and it, it was the only kind of opportunity I had to maybe just say, look, that was it. I'd, you know, I'll, I'll be finishing today. Um, to what extent were you slightly informed by what has become, and perpetuated by all of us really, a bit of a circus yeah. over the last couple of months? Do you think, right, this, this show is over, folks? Yeah, I, I, I didn't realise when I was making the decisions that there would be so much come along with it. Um, like, you know, you're sitting down at home inside in your own sitting room speaking to Adele or speaking to Gordon saying, oh, look, we'll give it an... We'll, Next, we give it another couple of weeks, and uh, then obviously it just took got momentum. Then, and everybody was very interested in it. So, look, it was it was grand. I was able to duck and dive away from it as much as I could. But everybody was fantastic. You know, there was nobody really. Well, I'm sure some people questioned it, but that was their own business. I was happy enough to go and do it. So, and once Adele was on board, and the kids and Gordon and the owners, obviously very important. I think it was really heartwarming was when I went to the yard to <coughs> to speak to Gordon. Um, all the lads were <coughs> Simon and Busty uh, put me on Conflated and Tiupu and all these kind of fancy horses that you normally don't get to ride in the morning. So they were kind of really teasing me. So and then you realise that yeah, there is some special talent left to be utilised during the year. So even. The wily old fox Russell could be out foxed yeah, the fox, by the yeah. <laughs> by. Well, I tell you, there's not much. <laughs> the lads at Cullen Tra. Yeah, there's not too many wiser than Simon and Bust. You know, they they know how to they, they, they know how to play you. They know how to play me. Simon always did. I, I actually tied with him in a novice riders title back in 1999, 2000. So we were always we were always around each other. Yeah. How important has it been for people to know how to play Davy Russell, the man, over the years? Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's just probably once I'm left alone, I seem to be happy. It's, it's the easiest way to play me. Uh, you know, I, no, no one spoke to me after Cheltenham. Only Busty rang me to say that um, we're schooling Wednesday. Come on, 
and that was it. That's all, and you know, and then Gordon obviously I spoke to Gordon, and Adele was, Adele wasn't happy even before that. She she just wasn't comfortable by the way Cheltenham finished. And uh, this is your wife, Adele, yeah, mum of four of your kids. Right? Yeah, yeah, and then Jamie as well is is my other daughter, and um, so she was, she just wasn't happy. She said it to me a couple of times, as if to say, you know, she wasn't comfortable with the way. Um, that myself and Gordon and a lot of the owners had such a good rapport over the last couple of years yeah. that it, it would end the way it ended in Cheltenham with me having having no success and it just didn't sit right with her and I, I said to my dad last night and he says it didn't sit right with me either he said but I, I, I don't have to sleep in the same bed as him you know what I mean <laughs> so once Adele is happy and the lads are happy that's the most important thing and Obviously, she was right. Um, it just feels so much better now. Um, I know now because I've spent enough time with you in the last twenty-four hours <laughs> to know that you're quite relaxed and genuinely feeling. Oh quite yeah, relaxed. I am actually a lot of the time. I'm actually relaxed, to be honest. But that's in stark contrast to the image certainly portrayed of yeah. you during Cheltenham. I mean, there was obviously a lot of physical pain during yeah. the week that was building up. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't for such an easy fall. I'd done an awful lot of damage in, in Leperstown and I promise you, I was riding in Leperstown like I was, I was on top of the world now. I, uh, the gopher was really enjoyable. Um, Mighty Potter went around just trying, as we saw a Corrick Rambler, the whole way through yeah. the race, I was slowing him down, just slowing him down. It was like we were hacking everybody else, it was like they were flat to the boards. And uh, then I just got this fall, Easy fall, fell onto the ground, no problem. But when I took a roll, my back protector moved and a horse kneed, his knee got me in like Muhammad Ali territory mm -hmm. now, just absolutely up in underneath my ribs and I, I done a bit of damage. Nothing that I wasn't used to in the past, but it was the timeline between mm. there and Cheltenham. And but still quite significant. I mean, to a layman, quite significant damage. Yeah, it was. and But... <clears throat> I suppose we're we're pretty fit and and around our our back and things can take a bit of hardship because we're used to it, you know. And um, just it was the continuous days of Cheltenham, one after the other, and it just got worse and worse and worse. As so it was more and more painful every time you went out. Yeah, yeah, and the painkillers weren't working. So, and I'm not one for painkillers. I don't like uh, if I can't take it without them. You know, I'm not sure I'll be able to take him with him. So mentally, that's going to start grinding away at you as well. Yeah, and the winners hadn't come, and you know, I really enjoyed Galvin. I, I enjoyed the cross country race like never before. It was just so easy. You went around, and and he finished second. That's great. Oh, you know, you finished second. You done nothing wrong. Bloody bloody, but it's not a winner. It's not a winner. It's 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 winners that count over there. And if you had to get one. Promise you, the pain goes. Everything else goes. You do things differently, and I just couldn't get it to click. You know, Chupu, Chupu, a oh, little bit too far out of my ground. But at the same time, I was happy. I was getting there, and then when it was time to get there, I just couldn't get him. I just couldn't lift him up, upsides, and you know, um, Pipe Piper. Again, everything in the race just yeah. Easy, 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 down to the last, absolutely wing the last and just give a little nod. And I couldn't regather myself to, to absolutely galvanise him up the hill and just done a short head. All my life I, I won them short heads. All my life, like, you know, Joe's Edge, all them horses. Um, I, I won the short heads and it just, I, I, I was falling short with the short heads, you know. And so when you decided not to ride um, conflated in the, in the Gold Cup, what was going, what was going through your head at, at that point? Talk uh, us through the sequence of events, because I think there was a lot of people quite concerned for you at that point. Ah, yeah, well, sure. look, I was, I was, I was, I was, it was just a decision that, that had to be made, and, and that was it, and it was quick, and I had to get out, get out of there, really, you know. I was, there was no point in being too concerned about me. I'm, 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 I, I can... Once the aftermath is there, I'm happy enough. Once yeah. I'm at home and do my own thing, I actually went straight to Dubai. We were selling a few horses in Dubai, so I was I enjoyed. It. I was happy enough. I was relaxed enough. I, I left that behind me. I'm, I have a great way of leaving things behind me and moving moving on. And sometimes I 
I, I can get upset with people or different things, but I move on f pretty, f pretty fast, you know. And, and obviously a lot <coughs> of the, the focus of, of that week was on the, the sort of flare-up between you and Michael O'Leary. Um, but in many senses, I, I wondered whether that was just actually a motif of the way that the two of you, both kind of interesting personalities and characters, had just sort of rubbed along and coexisted in this slightly unconventional way for, for years, however annoying it was for you at the time. Yeah, I, I was just a little bit disappointed once, once, once you mentioned my family and my, my, my commitment to them. That was disappointing, but it didn't anger me in any way, shape or form. I was just disappointed that that would have came into... You see, when I get up in the morning at five o'clock in the morning, I get into my car. From there till the last race is run, no problem. I'll take whatever anybody has to throw me. But when I come back at eight o'clock in the evening, I go into my own house. That's my own business, and what happens in there is, is 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 my business, not anybody else's. And that was a bit disappointing. But I'm not I'm I'm not convinced he meant it in in the way maybe it was, or I picked it up and and but I, I was just disappointed. And so. To what end did that get into your head and affect what you were doing in the saddle? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It didn't really affect me at the time, but I, I rose to the um, I rose to it, and I never rose to it in the past, but no. I rose to it there, and that was it. That was just that was it. I, I was never it never affected me in the past, but I just felt that. It was a big decision to come back, and I asked Lily and Finn, who are old enough, obviously Liam and Tess aren't, but they come with me every day, and Jamie, obviously, I said it to Jamie that, you know, that I'm, I'm coming back. And Jamie's your eldest daughter. Yeah, and they were all happy, you know, and obviously Adele was happy and um, for me to do it. So once, once, once they were happy for me to do it, I was happy to do it, you know what I mean? But, but, I did. I did ask them, you know, are you happy enough to come on another little bit of a journey? You know, um, it's interesting. You talk about keeping your counsel, which you've done quite often to quite good effect, and that really was one of the reasons why you ended up riding a whole raft more Grade One winners for for Jigginstown after you'd famously lost the job because you basically kept your mouth shut and yeah. and didn't say too much. Now you've retired. When O'Leary took you for the infamous cup of tea to basically tell you you, you and he were, were done for the time being, um, what did he actually say? Literally, I promise you, that was it. Um, he, he was, as, as it was said at the time, I had rode a winner for him in Punchestown that day and, um, and um, he just said, you know, it's time to move on. It was New Year's Eve. And and I I um I was just went into my shell a little bit. I left a couple of F's and B's out of me, but not to him or about him or anything like that, just to myself. And um that was it. I tell him I actually for the first thing in my mind at the time was when he said it to me was I needed to ring Jim Quality fairly quick because he was looking for a commitment for Lord Windermere uh -huh. and I hadn't given it to him. So my mind turned from from what I had, what rides I had to yeah. what rides I need to get, fairly sharpish. Uh, so I, I rang a number of people and um, Jim was one of the first people I rang and a good friend of mine, Peter Vaughan and my dad and different people. and. Uh, I was lucky, I was riding for Robert Tyner the next day and some, I may have rode a double and I think that was the, kind of the beauty of it. The next day I rode two winners and I went on to win a Gold Cup that year. And, but the supply of horses had slowed down yeah. dramatically from kind of riding 100, and 100 plus winners to riding 20 to 30. You know, and I broke my arm as well quite dramatically in... Uh, in the parade ring in Mallow one day and so um, that was it was extremely sore and I thought it was quite gruesome 
break and my first question to the doctor was, um, you know, have I a chance of riding a horse again? He says, oh yeah, he says, I repaired bomb victims in the north. I said, you're going to be perfectly fine. I said, so that put me at ease then. I, was, I actually thought it might end my career. I was about 30. Mm. Seven or eight, and you know, if it did end it, I was, I was ready to go even at that stage because the supply of horses had stopped. But how lucky I was then to, that the <laughs> surgeons were able to put me back together and go again. And then the the wheel turned, and you end up, as I said, end up riding a bunch more Grade One winners for for those guys, and including Tiger Roll. Yeah, in, it, in the Grand National. Tour. It happened in the North. Um, I. I always wanted to write. The second string can often be an equal first string, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So uh, in the conditions race up the north, during the summertime, Jigginson had two in it. I think the two of them were Gordons. And um, Brian was riding one, and I was riding the other, and Brian's didn't run. It's Brian Cooper. Yeah, and he was number one jock. His didn't run, and I stayed on my horse, whereas Norm in the past... Um, the the, uh, the number one would switch on to the, yeah. the next ring, but I stayed on him, and he won. And then um, I won the Galway Plate for Henry on Balco de Flo, and it just kind of just kept dripping along. You know, there was no commitment there. They weren't, but to be fair. Gordon and Henry and the trainers kind of wanted me to ride the horses and. Um, so that's the way it, back of the flow wouldn't arrive near the same year and um, I'm sure there was a couple more in there as well yeah, and Gordon, I rode a lot of winners for Gordon that year and I had gone back from riding 25 to 30 winners a year to riding, to being champion jockey, sorry yeah, I was champion jockey again. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how yeah. we've just forgotten about that small, yeah. that small detail in all, yeah. of, in all of that. Yeah. Um, g- amazing bounce back ability, amazing ability to, to recover from serious injury as well. Um, it doesn't seem like yesterday we were talking about whether you would make it back from your your broken neck. And I remember distinctly doing this show and you appearing on Zoom and you were talking <laughs> about you were talking about getting back, you know, within weeks or within days or something. And you're sitting there and you can't you can't move really. Yeah. You're kind of moving just from the upper half of your body. And I thought this guy's crackers. There's no way he's going to yeah. get back on a horse. What were you thinking at that time? What were you really thinking? Oh, I was riding, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to ride, and, and the only thing I, I regret now that I'm retired is that I didn't get to ride another winner for Charles. That was my last ride for Charles. I, I, Charles Burns. Uh, yeah, and we had so many good years. And um, Solwit was the the horse that really oh, yeah. cemented you, wasn't it? So many, so many horses, and so many days. Like we had, I know we had a day in Roscommon was was absolutely <laughs> fabulous, you know. So, um, and I just would have loved to have. I, I really would have loved to ridden another winner for Charles, but it wasn't to be. But uh, yeah, the, I broke my neck, and again the surgeons. I have to, just, you know, they were just unbelievable. Um, reassured me. Yeah, your neck is stronger now than it actually was before you came in. Um, that and then, but it was all muscle that I couldn't move. It was mm. my whole neck had locked. So then the next step was to find a physio that was go to go to above and beyond and I mean did he go above and beyond like he he bought equipment for me to use he just went and it was every day you know twice a week moving 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 kept going and getting to there and getting to there and getting to back there was they were all successes and I would never when I came back I was never fitter or better than it was after coming back from break my neck. I'd done so much work. I had so much core strength. I had, without riding a horse, I literally rode five horses before I came back. Mm. Um, oh no, sorry, I apologise. I had ridden a bit to come back for Cheltenham and that wasn't going to work. I couldn't extend my head back up properly. The 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 axle in my neck wasn't working properly so I couldn't see the full thing and, and Jennifer was adamant, Jennifer Pugh was adamant that I'm not I wasn't there yet. We had gone through tests to decide whether I was there yet, and she decided I wasn't there yet. And um, correctly, obviously, and I was agreeing with her. You know, we were we were all going along, and uh, then it was just took more work, more work, and more time. 
Uh, that was disappointing. It was hard to take uh, that I couldn't go to Cheltenham. Um, but I knew I wasn't ready. And yeah. Jennifer knew I wasn't ready. So the doctors had been so good all along that I was, whatever decision they were making, I was, I was going with it. And then all of a sudden, I don't know why I was, I was just up riding out and we schooled kind of about five or eight horses that morning and every one of them just went bang, 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 bang. And I came in and I said, declare me there for Down Patrick at, the, at Friday, I think it was, or something. And um, yeah, just went from there, yeah. I actually don't know how I had my license. I, uh, if I had to, oh, maybe I had to go and renew my license maybe or something in between the time of declaration and making up my mind because if they had said, you don't have a license, you can't ride, then it would drip on and drip on and drip yeah. on and maybe that, that feeling might be gone, you know. Cheltenham had become such an important part of your life because you had this ridiculous record where you were riding winners there. Yeah. Even, even if you hadn't ridden the most winners, a Russell winner or two was yeah. just part of the festival. Going back to the time when you were riding winners for, for Ferdy. Ferdy, Earth. yeah. Ferdy and started the whole thing, yeah. They were, and, and I wondered, you know, at the time when you were riding for Ferdy Murphy, whether you might do a, a, a Walsh or a or a Garrity and end up spending the majority of your time in, in England for for a decade or, or so. It didn't quite pan out, did it? You you ended up gravitating back home. Just talk me through the Ferdy time and your relationship with him and how that how that kind of progressed and came to an end. Yeah, so I, I, even before that, so I, I was I was riding as an amateur mm. and with real fun. Like I was riding forever. I had to pick it up. I had everything I had, I was at the top of my game. These were your best days. These yeah. were your best days, weren't they? Well, there was no cameras. There was no. <laughs> um, the journalists were it was Neil O'Donnell and the likes. You know, very, you know, easy lads to deal with. As in, not that the ones now aren't, but it's just that it, it was small and. And also, you were Mr. D. Russell, and I you was. were only famous to about three people. Exactly, and I could walk down the street of. I could go to the Twenty One Club in Cheltenham, and no one had a clue who <laughs> I was. You know, or we could, we he was come to entry. I rode a winner of the bumper and entry, and the crack we used to have. Nobody knew who we were, so we had great sport. But um, so then um, uh, Tom O'Mahony. Uh, uh, Adrian actually had a similar injury to me, Adrian Maguire, and he he was he was, he had to finish. And and Ferdy had was building again, you know, a brilliant man at the sales, always building on his team. He had a big team of horses and a couple of very nice horses at the time. So this is the kind of truckers tavern era, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and um, his dog and um, Kalahari yeah, King was here. Kalahari around, right? King yeah. was around, and and a lot of nice bumper horses. The Supreme Leader horse that won a couple of bumpers and a couple of novice hurdles was a good horse and. Uh, he had another Supreme developer was it? Uh, no. no, he was after me, but he had a Turtle Island horse there that wasn't too bad. Um, but a lot of nice horses. I think of his name. Big, yeah. big stable. Yeah, and a lot of <coughs> lot of stable, a lot of horses. Um, so it uh, just rang me and said, you know, everything is there, everything, all the horses, ride them all, no if ands or buts. And uh, that was the only way I would have turned professional, mm. is if I had that kind of a. Uh, that kind of an offer, and so, uh, so do you, he's, is he the most significant player in your career in that respect? Insofar as, well, had the, it not been for that phone call, no, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have turned professional. I don't think I, I, I had no interest in turning professional for the sake of turning professional. I was quite happy with what he was doing. I was very successful in what he was doing. I was an amateur in every way, shape, and form. I loved it. Uh, I loved but you could earn a living as you can. Yeah, bringing on pointers, yeah. selling, buying, being yeah. part of that whole scene. Yeah, and you were working, and you ha- I had, a, a, I was in the circle that I was in control of everything I was doing. Whereas, um, if I had to turn professional, you had to step outside of uh, it's outside of that zone. So I, I do, <coughs> just come back to Ferdy in a sec. Just pick up on something you said there. To what extent do you think that base, that grounding, that fact that you really were kind of an independent guy? informed how you dealt with the rest of your career and that you wouldn't actually be shoved about too much. It was kind of like you've always had this sort of, yeah, I'm my own man. Yeah, so it's, it, it's a little thing that, that I have and I, I think it, I, I see it a little bit. Not, not saying, I mean, he, he, I'm sure he could be an, a much better writer than I was, but uh, I see it in Michael O'Sullivan. Uh, he's the one guy that kind of, I was 22 or three when I turned professional and if I had to turn professional when I was 18 or 19, mm. or even 19, say I rode my first novice rider year and I turned professional in yeah. 19 or 20, it would have fallen apart so much. I think 
the riders. Now there is an exception to every rule. You get your Jack Kendys and and them lads, but I just think the 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 core of what I got in point of points, the travelling, the meeting people, the not so manic, you know, zoning in on are you able to ride, are you not able to ride. Nobody knows in a point of point yeah. whether you're able to ride unless you're at the point and, of point. And you, you weren't being anointed as the next best thing no. until you were well into your Exa- 20s. Exactly, exactly. So and it's not like here's the teenage wonder kid yeah. and what's he going to do now? Yeah, and um, I had all of that behind me. I had the grounding behind me. I had winners ridden for a lot of very good people and I think that grounding stood to me you know, more than people realise. So back to Ferdy, it was all going well until it wasn't going well. Yeah, so... Is there a theme here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, was, I, was, uh, I was so happy with the excitement of everything becoming a jockey and I was living with Ferdy's son, Paul, and I think if it wasn't for Paul, I may not have lasted a month. I just, I was so happy in Ireland I was so comfortable and what really got me in England was I didn't actually know where I was going as in I, I didn't know if I was going south, north, south, east or west. Mm. I didn't know the roads, I didn't know anything. But if, only for Paul. Paul was the was the main reason that I stayed for so long. He was a he's a brilliant guy. And um and then obviously Ferdy was brilliant. He gave me hundred percent. His owners were brilliant. There was no problem there. But I had this tendency to drift back home and there was no racing in England on a Sunday. So when I finished on a Saturday evening in in England, my next stop was the airport to come home and ride in Ireland on the Sunday. And then there was a couple of times I got injured and Ferdy wasn't overly happy with me going. He wanted me to stay, but he didn't want me to go to Ireland. And I don't know, it was just pure luck. Ireland was starting to build a big, good horses, you know. And... um, the guys that I had ridden point of points for were starting to become trainers, proper trainers, and had proper good horses like Robert Tyner and Liam Burke, Pat Doyle. You know, they were all building a team of horses. So I had nearly as many horses, and the Charles as well, you see. So I'd nearly, fairly had 100 horses, and I nearly had as many horses, I nearly had 100 horses in Ireland yeah. to ride as well. So um, then I just said, look, come here, I don't want you to go. I said, I need to go home. He said, well, if you go home, there's no point in coming back and kind of literally ended up like that. I just didn't go back. Um, after the weekend, I stayed with Paul Carberry for, <laughs> for a couple of weeks. <laughs> so um, that was, uh, that, that kind of sealed my decision it was good to come home because we had great crack. And, um, and Paul wasn't going to give out to me anyway, do you know what I mean? Um, so he just said, you know, Everything Paul done was always go with the flow and mm. kind of just went with the flow and that was it. Um, I'm not sure what's more impressive. You, you coming back from breaking your neck, you coming back just this week from Cheltenham to ride grade one winners, you riding Cheltenham Festival winners after Ferdy Murphy had fired you, you riding Tiger Roll for two Grand Nationals after Jiggins Down had fired you, or surviving two weeks with Paul Carberry. Paul Carberry, yeah. So I did a lot more with some crack. Oh, jeez, we had... We had great fun, um, and uh, yeah. So um, I mean, who was? Oh, Mick could o, you, Mick could O'Brien. You give, could you give Paul Carberry a run for his money in the in the having fun stakes? No, no, no. It's different kind of fun with me. I, 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 um, I can enjoy myself, but I, I, I never drank, so I, I could always go home. You know, I could, I could disappear from a party in a shot, like, do you know what I mean? But I could also stay there till be the last. The old Irish there. goodbye. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, and it's did more. Did anyone see? Did anyone see Russell going home last night? No. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> um, so, but uh, then Mick O'Brien, a brilliant man. He was a great man, Mick O. I loved. Not everybody's cup of tea, but he was my cup of tea. I loved him. He was. Um, he was a brilliant trainer, so I started riding out for him um, in uh, Nace, and uh, um, so I had that. And then I went to Edward O'Grady's. I rode for Edward O'Grady for a bit, and uh, but still riding a lot of winners, you know, and tipping away, kind of riding, you know, kind of always going up in the numbers. Every year I was increasing on the numbers, and then I got to a stage that I was, yeah fighting out for a championship, you know, with no, 
with no stable behind me, but a lot of support, you know, from all different angles. And um, like I rode f winners for f guys that trained one horse to 10 horses to two horses, mares, homebreds. They'd ride them out after milking the cows in the morning and um, that kind of, all them, and real good, well able to train now, you know. Yeah. Um, Tim Doyle, I just love riding for Tim Doyle. No, he's not, he's a professional trainer, but he, I, I, he, 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 his horses would improve, 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 improve. I used to ride a horse, a, a Supreme Leader horse. I won in Punchstown for him and I just drop him out, stone cold. Oh, Jesus, I'd be, I could be 20 lengths off the pace and I knew this would have come alive and I knew there'd be no pressure from Tim, like, you know, he'd, um, so. You, you, I, you've got a, you've got a, you know, a, a reputation really for, for that's <laughs> the way you liked to ride horses. You like to just ease them into races and. Yeah, I, I, and, I actually also about. love making the running, would you believe. It's, I, I love making the running once it's the right thing to do. The one place I actually didn't really like was in the ruck. Like yesterday in the bumper now, I was in the ruck. I didn't, I wasn't able to get out of the ruck, so I had to make a decision. I wasn't going to go forward, so I went back. Um, the horse didn't win, but he ran a nice race. I think if I stay where I was, I was going to do more, more harm than good to the horse, you know, so he ran a nice race, and hopefully that will stand to him in the future. You mentioned Carberry, obviously, a sort of genius. They, they, I use that word advisedly. I know it's bandied around an awful lot, but I say it only because you could never really work out why he was brilliant, but he was. Yeah. Um, whereas you could more easily get a grip of why some of these other jockeys did what they did and were so good. Were you conscious when you're sharing a weighing room with Carberry, uh, Ruby, Barry Garrity, McCoy and all the others that, that this was a bit of a, we've talked about golden eras, but this was a bit of a, an elite group? Or did you never really feel it like that? No, it was AP and... I, I, I didn't feel, I felt like I was, I, I, I felt AP was, was, you know, special, like he was. Well, like a different type of competitor. Yeah, but I wanted to beat him. I wasn't afraid of him, if you know, Not, I don't mean that in a, in a, no. in, in, a in, in. You weren't in awestruck a, by him. No, but I, 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 I knew what he was. I knew what he was. I knew he was what we have never seen before. So my main objective was to, at some stage, beat him or go to his level, not his level, but, you know, compete with him. And then Ruby, the same, and Barry, the same, and Paul, the same. They were all ahead of me. You see, they were professional a long time. You know, they had a head start on me as professional, so I was amateur, and I had catching up to, to get to him. So I was very... Uh, focused on joining that. Yeah, that's where I wanted to be. Someone said, uh, just small things will sit in your mind. And someone said, told me not to turn professional. You're a big fish in a small pond. If you turn professional, you're a small fish in a big pond. I didn't want to be a small fish in a big pond. I wanted to prove, not prove them wrong, but I, I just didn't want someone's saying something to me to affect me ne negatively. I always, if someone said something to me, I always wanted that to affect me positively, as yeah. in make me do more. So if someone said that you gave that a bad ride, I don't not want to ride that horse again. I want to ride the horse again to make sure I make up for for it. Or, or, or you know, I, I, I want it to be positive. I take criticism positively or not even criticism, whatever someone's comment is, mm -hmm. I tried to make it positive and have an effect. I wanted, I wanted to get to their level. They were the level and I knew they were special. I knew they were different. I knew what they were doing was different. I was aware of all this going on, but I always seemed to kind of think I was chasing the, the rainbow. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I was, ne I never really realized that I had got there until even when I was champion jockey one year after the other and then I was champion jockey for a third time. But it was it was after that that I realised that it all plattered out. That you were somewhat at peace yes. with your own ability level. Yes, and I enjoyed them years like I enjoyed the first three point of pointing. Interesting. Yeah, I really did. I loved going racing, 
when I was chasing the dragon, you know, when I was when I was chasing the rainbow all all along, I I I I, I wanted to um, I wanted to um, I was getting there, I was couldn't reach the top rung of the ladder, and then I when I I, I realised that I had reached it, and I enjoyed it an awful lot more. You were definitely chasing the rainbow. Yeah, I'm no. worried if you're chasing no, the no, dragon, not the dragon. Yeah, I got that one. Mystic days yeah, are, yeah, we're, yeah. we're behind you at this yeah. point. <laughs> um, your your homing instinct comes through very strongly, though. Always, 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 always through the early days, through the pointer pointing, through the Ferdy, through the Gordon, through the O'Leary, through everything. Ultimately, it all comes back to home, and it's not doesn't seem an accident to me that you've gone back to your home county uh, to make your your life and. Your dad lives next door, yeah, and that's where you want to be. It, it seems a very, very strong thread through your life. Yeah, I love it. I, I absolutely adore y'all. I, I think it's, I don't know what it is about the place. It's just, I just love the place. It's uh, whether it's the beach or it's the people or it's the family around me, and it's nearly the comfort of of knowing where I'm going. I, I think. I, I, like, my mother was a marvellous woman, like, she was a real homely woman, and she baked, and she, you know, oh, we had a brilliant upbringing. You see, the beauty of where I live is, I live on a farm in a town, in a big town, mm -hmm. and... So you uh, don't feel like you're in the middle of nowhere? But you do, in about a hundred yards, you walk into a field, and there is nothing around, only, only birds and horses and whatever you want and you, you walk 100 yards down, there's a, there's a petrol station, you know, with a convenience store there. And, um, but I have brilliant neighbours, uh, people around the farm are very, are very aware of what's going on in there, that the horses need, you know, to be left alone. And uh, um, so it's, it's, it's just, I love y'all, I love everything about it. Um, I had a brilliant upbringing there, it was a kind of a, it was a holiday town. Uh, so the summers were super crack and the winters were, you know, you would always find something else to do during the winter, you know, but the summers were, were busy with the beach and people used to come there on vacation. And I I just feel that it's about to hit again. It, it, it went through a lull, um, but there's a green maze coming in and there's a lot of excitement around the place. Um, what kind of a satisfaction does it give you to think that you're, you are four kids under eight? Or eight and under yeah. the idea that they could now be enjoying that kind of experience that you yeah had. I really want to let, give them the freedom that I was given by my parents so I hope they <coughs> I just that's up to themselves but I think I can see a twinkle in their eyes that there's a bit of development in them all so that they'll that they should be able to enjoy it yeah. I cannot imagine where this has been passed down from <laughs> I don't know <laughs> it has a lot to answer for oh, of course of course yeah. um, how would you like your career in the saddle to be remembered by people? What's characterised it? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just... <coughs> I gave it my all. I gave it my all. I, I emptied the tank over and over and over and over. Um, and I'm happy with what I've... With what I've... That I gave it my all. I didn't leave anything behind. I'm happy I came to entry. I'm actually delighted I came to entry now and... And um, uh, remembered, I, I just, just, I didn't break any records as such. Um, but I, I'll never be a, an AP McCoy. I remember as an AP McCoy, but I, I might be a step below them, you know. If I was, that, that might be good enough, you know. Well, you'll not be forgotten, that's for sure. Yeah. We're very pleased you came to Aintree as well and came here today. Yeah. For the moment, Davy Russell, thank you very much. Thanks, Nick. We'll be right back in a few moments. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.